And so the first of the multiple choice from the 2009 tyre, a reconciliation. So that should be straightforward enough. Reconciliation meaning to work out the value of any particular term, you need to know the term before it. It doesn't tell you how to work out any term at any great distance. It simply says, if you have a sequence of numbers, this formula will tell you how to get from one number to the next, from term UN to term UN plus one. So if I want to get to term three in this case, and I know term one, I'll have to use this pattern twice. First of all, to get to the second term, then to get to the third. So what have you got? U1 is two. So U2 must be following the pattern. Three times it, three times the two, add on four, so it'll be six plus the four is 10. So that means the next term was 10. And then to get the third term, it's the same pattern again. It'll be three times it, and add on four. Three times the 10, add four, that's 30 plus four, which is 34. Then you look it up. 34 is answer A. Number two then, here's the equation of a circle in its expanded form. What's the radius of the circle? Now, without agonising over these differences of A's and B's and F's and G's, just in order to avoid negatives, the basic formula is X minus A squared plus Y minus B squared equals R squared, where AB is the centre of the circle and the radius is R. Expanding that out produces this. So we'd have squaring the bracket, square the first, minus twice the product, square the last, same with this one, square the first, minus twice the product, square the last, and if I was to bring that over, R squared over as well, that would equal zero. That's what provides this. So quite clearly, all that's happened for this middle term when it's expanded is that instead of it being the number here, which has been subtracted, it's been doubled. So that should have been a negative of half of it, and that should have been the negative of half of it. That's straightforward. Also, these three parts would combine together to provide the number C at the end. So interchanging them, you would have the radius would equal, and that would be minus C instead for this part. So the radius will simply be the square root of, and it'll be A squared plus B squared. So it's simply get the coordinates of the center and then square them. And of course, in squaring them, it doesn't matter whether they're positive or negative. But interchanging those, subtract the number at the end. So subtract the negative 75. So I've got the square root of 16 and 9 plus 75, that's 25, that's 100. Square root of 100, so the radius must be 10. Which is answer B. Number three, there's a triangle PQR with these vertices. What's the gradient of the median PS? Now, you don't need a sketch for this, but I'll put a little sketch down. Where we? If P was about three back, two down, and Q was about here, and R is three forward, six up. Oh, it's a bit messy looking. I'll just put something like this. So we've got PQR. What's the equation with well, gradient of PS if PS is a median? Well, that means S must be the midpoint of QR. So I'll do that. S is the midpoint of QR. So it'll be the average of the coordinates. Sometimes you can just look at it and think, what's halfway between them? Because it's obvious. Halfway from four to six is five. I'll put it down anyway. What's halfway from negative one to three? We'll add them in half it. What's halfway from four to six? We'll add them in half it. So that means that S, the midpoint of QR, must be two divided by two is one, 10 divided by two is five. So the gradient, the gradient of PS then will be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which I don't usually write. I usually write difference in y over difference in x. Still, done it now. Difference in y going from P to S. So five take away negative two for the y coordinates, one take away negative three for the x coordinates, that makes seven and that makes four, so the answer is seven upon four. Looking at that up, seven upon four is answer D. Number four, 
a curve as this equation, what's the gradient of the tangent at this point on the curve? Well, every single point on a curve, there's three numbers. There's the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate of the point, and there's the gradient of the tangent. The y-coordinate is obviously given by the formula that says y equals, and the gradient will be the rate of change of the heights. That'll be the derivative. So differentiate it. If you differentiate that, then you'll have the gradients. So I simply multiply by the power. 3 times 5 is 15. Take 1 off the power 2. Linear term, that'll just be the 12. If the x-coordinate is 1, feed it into that. So I'll have 15 times 1 squared minus 12. That's just 15 take away 12, which is 3. So at that point, the gradient should be 3, which is answer C.